Hello, it's Ollie here at The Crafty Whisk, and I'm so grateful that you could join me today. Rightio, so we have another card swap that's coming up, and this theme is Dotty. And I do my card swaps, as you know, through Dawn Lewis Imagery in New South Wales, in here in Australia. And she runs, um, oh, I think it's seven maybe eight card swaps during the year, all with different themes, and it's to suit all skill levels. Uh, but it's only available for people within Australia, unfortunately. Um, so with the card panel, or the card swap, you just do the front panel. You don't do an entire card because it's it's um, less expensive to post card fronts as opposed to eight card whole entire cards. So we are using the Australian measurements, um, which is an A4 sheet cut into four, or 14.8 by 10.5. So with my dotty theme, I've actually gone with Cookie Monster. And I've got dots on the background that are stamped. I've got dots in the cookies. And I've got some more cookies down here with dots in them. So I think I've well and truly covered the dot theme quite well. So I'm going to go through um, and show you the various techniques that I've used. And then probably at the end, I'll just um, fast forward me putting them all together. Alrighty. So to start with, I need to do the floorboards. I thought that was the easiest place to start because then I can have everything coming from that. So for the floorboards, I'm using a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp called On The Ground. And they are red rubber stamps and you've got um, some floorboards or planks there, some tiles, stones and grass. And I am using another floorboard set. And with these set of stamps, they are from a perspective, so the um, centre line is there and then all the other planks sort of go towards it, so it looks like they are actual floorboards and things like that. So I've already set up my Misty, I've taken out the mouse pad, um, actually I don't use the mouse pad, I actually use uh, the waffle flower grip mat now, i found that that's really handy, so I've just taken that out because the red rubber stamps are deeper, and what I've done is I've positioned my card base to where I know that they all need to get lined up. So I'm just lining it up along here and along that edge of the of the writing here. And then what I did was I measured roughly the center point of my card and then popped the center point of the stamp where that is on the card and put it down, put it down and picked up the stamp. And I'm using Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in Cappuccino. So I just need to ink it up. It probably will need a couple of inkings. And just press it, let that dye ink settle into the paper a bit. And let me stop it there. I'm just going to use my little stamping buddy. A bit there. And then I'm going to ink it up again. And just go over it and I just need to do a little bit down the bottom that's the really good thing about using a stamping platform is you can stamp multiple times I'll just do that top edge just in case the color difference does show up okay the good thing with uh, these inks is they do settle down and that's the color difference that we will have at the end once it's all nice and dry. So I'll pop that aside and I'll just clean off the stamp. My chamois's gone dry so I'm just going to use a wipe for now. Okay, close that up. That's all I need that one for at the moment. So my next step is the dots on the background. So that is a stamp set from Uniquely Creative, and it's called Splatter Mark Short Paints and Paints. I've got two in there actually. This is the paint splatter, it's a long one, that one there. And there's two different kinds of paint splatter on this stamp. There's the fine, and then there's the more splotchy. I'm only going to be using the fine, which means I have to only ink up a certain part of the stamp. I'm going to be using Hero Arts, Hero Arts Shadow Ink in Soft Sky. It's a really nice colour, this one, but I don't want any to get onto my planks. So I'm just going to pop some low tack tape down. This one's from Hippie Doodle. As you can see, it's been well used so far with all of this. And the stamp that I want to use is at that end. 
Now this is pretty random. Oops, Daisy. I'll put it that way. So I can see this. There we go. So I'm just plonking it down, not really too concerned about where it ends up. Just ink up that bit there in the middle, like so. So it's nice and dotty, and that will fade back down as well. You can already see just with those few minutes how much paler that has gone. Let's clean that off. All right, my next step is the floorboard, and for that I am using. Lawn Fawn's white wood grain and I pretty much just need a quarter of an inch strip so what I might do is I might just take it to the edge of the cutting area I think that would be good what's that like yep that's a good length so I'll do that again should be enough. Okay, now I want it to actually look like it's timber, like if I just put that down there it's white on white, it's a bit tricky to see. So I'm just going to grab an ink cube, I'm just going to use Lawn Fawn's sugar cookie. And all I'm going to do is pop it onto my scrap paper here and just go ink pad straight down and just gently brush it along in nice long strokes. And that picks up the wood grain texture. I'll just do these other strips while I'm at it. You don't need to press firmly, it's, you just need a light touch. Now I just need to glue that on top here. I might just put the glue on here. Just along oops, the top. And then just simply stick that down. And trim off the excess. Okay. So that's our base card done. Now it's just all of the other little bits and pieces we need. So for that, the Cookie Monster that I'm using has come from Kindred Stamps, uh, Neighbourhood Friends. So it's basically all of your um, Sesame Street characters. So I've stamped a whole lot of those out and coloured them in. Uh, I might actually colour one in for you. The blues I'm using are B16, which is the pale one, B29, which is the dark, and B18, which is the mid. So I'm going to go in with my light one first and just colour in section by section. I will speed this bit up. This is not fascinating to watch.
Okay, now to fix up any little boo-boos, I've got a white gel pen and I did have a black gel pen. Where's my black one? I've put it away. Of course I have. So the white gel pen, I'm going to just clean up in the eyes. I did try and use the, um, the blending Copic, but the blue doesn't actually blend back in perfectly, whereas this hides it absolutely perfectly. And then the black one, I'm just going to go over his goggly eyes, and it gives it a bit nice shine. So that's Cookie Monster done. I will fussy cut those out later. So now for um, the cookies in the background here. What I'm using is a stencil set which came with the stamp set. It was a kit. Um, so the kit is Neighbourhood Friends and it's a two-part cookie stencil. And for this I am going to use my grip mat which normally lives in my Misty. Take off the protector. You can use anything. Like I've used all sorts of things. You've seen me in previous videos with what I've used to do stenciling on. I'm actually really liking this the best, I must say, because whatever excess stencil you have just sticks on it. It doesn't fall off. <laughs> it's brilliant. All right, so the base of the cookie, I'm using antique linen in the Distress Oxide. I'm using my little makeup brush, which really helps my hands. It covers bigger area much quicker. Now with this it doesn't need to be perfect blending because they're cookies so they're meant to have colour differences in them when they're baked. So there's that. Just to go around the edges I'm using Distress Oxide in Gathered Twigs and this will just give me a little bit of definition around the edge of the cookie crust. You don't have to be perfect because I am going to blend this out. It's just for an illusion of a crust. You don't go over the little bite marks because that's not the crust. It's just the edges of the cookies. And remember it might look stark now but ink does settle. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the antique linen and just blend all that through. And that will help get rid of the harshness that we have on some of the cookies. Okay. The last bit is the chocolate chips. So we need our next stencil. Line it up. And I'm using Vintage Photo for this one. Now because they're tiny circles, I'm actually going around in both directions. So I'm going that way and then that way. So um, I don't know if you've seen Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. That way I know I'm getting proper little circles and I'm getting every bit of the stencil. And you can make these cookies all different flavours too. You can make them, um, you can make these into sprinkles and have multicolours. You can have chocolate chip cookies with white chocolate chips on top, and for that you would just use a pigment white ink. Okay. Oh, now I didn't, I forgot to mention with these stencils, I found them really hard to line up um, if I was just doing like part of a panel. So I've actually popped the number one, number two in the corners 
where they should be on top of each other like that. And I'll just put a little bit of sticky tape on them so that it doesn't come off when I clean the stencils down. So that is our cookie panel. Now these I cut down to fit into the frame. Just pop all this aside. Get the frame out. So the frame I'm using is from Pink and Main. It's a reverse scallop rectangle. And I've used the second smallest and I have done this ahead of time because you do not want to sit there and watch me die cut. I've die cut them out of the blue and then I've also die cut them out of scrap white card and I've just layered one of the white ones on the back of each blue one just so it's a little bit of depth to the picture frame. And then I've gone ahead and trimmed my cookies down to fit pretty much in the frame. They might be a little bit off. So I trimmed them down to get a ruler, two and three quarters by two. And I think they actually need to be a little bit smaller than that. I need them to be, yeah, sort of like in between two and a half and two and three quarters by one and three quarters. But I just did a rough, a rough cut first. So then once they are all glued together, I'm simply going to glue each of those cookie pictures to the back of the frame. And the reason I kind of did it a bit bigger is some of these you'll notice it like it's pretty white there at the top. I don't have much cookie. So it gives me the opportunity to maneuver it down and across a bit so I get a lot of cookies in there and then I can just go ahead and trim that bit off. So I'll do that. I will put glue on the back of the frame. I'm just going to grab my glue sheet because this bit will probably be messy. So I'm just popping a little bit of glue on the frame. Oops, that's a lot of glue there. And then I'm going to go from the frame on top of the cookies so I know which part of the cookies I'm getting into the frame like so push that down that was that excess glue that I knew about there and normally I would just pop my weight on there and just let that dry but just for the sake of showing you what I'm going to do next I'm just going to go in with scissors and trim back being careful not to cut the frame so I'm sort of going in at an angle cutting that frame, or oh, sorry, cutting the picture to fit inside the frame. And there you go. Nicely done. So then it's a matter of sticking this onto here and I'll just grab my fine liner. What I need to do now is draw my um, strings that attach this to the wall. So I'm going to pretty much center that, rough, sort of like roughly. I'm just going to mark roughly where I need the string to go, but I haven't marked where you can see it. I sort of just like just tipped up the picture frame a little bit and I've got my two marks there. And then I'm just going to, you can be really accurate if you want and just sort of see how far apart those were from each other. It's roughly two and a half, so one and a quarter will be my midpoint up there and then you can either freehand this or use a ruler. I use a ruler because my freehand is not great like so. Then we're going to glue this down or you can use tape runner or um, double sided tape whatever you want. I'm going to pop that down, centre the string a bit, just making sure now that this is on straight. Yep. Okay. So that's on. Now I've got to go and cut some cookie monsters to be able to put on here, so I will do that off screen. But I do need to stamp Cookies Make Everything Better on here. So I'm just going to use this one, pop that into the corner. And 
Actually, I've already got it on here. I might as well use that. I was wondering where it went. I was ahead of myself. So I'm just going to use this little stamp positioner from We Are Memory Makers. Pop the card in there. I've already ascertained where I need the stamp to be. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to go in with my VersaFine Onyx Black. Just ink that up. I love this little stamp positioner tool for sentiments. It's um, it's so handy. It's so little, perfect. And what I did was I just used one of those Sizzix double-sided adhesive um, sheets that you're meant to use on your stamping platform. I just cut a little bit of that so that my card actually just sticks into there. And that is now ready for the next one. So that's that there. So bear with me while I fussy cut some of these ones out and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm up to the last one now. I've did all the uh, fussy cutting and I've assembled all the other cards. I've just left this one to last. I just wanted to show you just here on a couple of cards I actually um, there wasn't enough strips to go the whole way across so I combined two strips and I did it where it would be in a position where Cookie Monster was going to come over it so you won't actually ever see that join. So to attach Cookie Monster I've just used one millimetre um, double-sided foam adhesive. This is from Snazzy Scrappin. And I've just chopped some of them into quarters for his two feet. So they're going to come under the skirting board. And then I've left a gap where it's going to be on the skirting board. And I've popped a few more dots where it's going to be under the frame. And I'm just going to pop some glue on the top of his eyes to attach him to the frame. So you don't want to put the foam dots all over him because we are dealing with different layers here. And he will um, bend. Where you don't want him to. So just a bit of glue on his eyes and then I'm going to position him over that join there and where all the foam dots are meeting the card and his just top of his eyes are meeting that picture frame and I've covered up that join in the skirting board so you're not going to see it and he's sitting just nicely there. Hi Ryan, nearly dinner time I know. Now to finish it off uh, these sprinkles also came in the kit for neighbourhood friends and it's just some cookies, some little cookie monster faces, large and small cookies. So what I'm going to do is pop one of the small cookies at the top of the photo frame. So it looks like it's, um, you know those like hook things that you can get for paintings, the decorative hook? It's just going to be a cookie. I thought that was quite fitting for him. And then I'm also going to pop some cookie crumbs. I'm just going to do three and I have broken up a few of the big cookies to make my cookie crumbs. And just putting them on there, like so. And then just to finish off the cookie monster, monster sorry, he's going to go over with a bit of white gel, just to add some highlights, just finishes him off. And if you've got any blue coming outside of the Cookie Monster, this is your opportunity as well, just to use the white gel pen to cover up any of that. So all of those go back in there. Now, um, I have seen um, on Etsy as well, people sell um, all sorts of sprinkles. You just look up clay shaker sprinkles and all sorts of things come up and I have seen cookies available. So that is our finished card. I think it's really cute. And I use the sentiment cookies make everything better. So it can be for a get well. It can be if they're um, going through a bit of a rough time, birthday, all sorts of things. Kids and adults alike. A lot of adults like me who are a bit nerdy like these sort of the older kits where um, like fandom, I suppose. So this is all of the ones that I've made. So it's all ready for the card swap. And I have a spare one here as well for my own personal collection so I can see what I've done. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got um, this set, I'd love to see what you've done with it as well. And um, remember, you can use anything in your stash. The whole idea with, with, with this one is that I had a picture frame and I've got a critter and a wall and floorboards. So you can, in, you can use any other critter that you like. Alrighty, thanks guys. 
please like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss it when I bring out a new video.